The Accomplished Cook is an English cookery book published by the Restoration-era professional cook Robert May in 1660, and the first to group recipes logically into sections. The book made early use of two ingredients brought to Europe from the Americas, the potato and the turkey. Context Following the English Civil War, Robert May, the celebrity chef of his time, wrote and published The Accomplished Cook. Book Publication The work was first published in 1660 by Nathaniel Brooke. The last revision made during the author's lifetime was published in 1665. A second edition was published by Nathaniel Brooke in 1671. A third edition was published in 1678 by Obadiah Blagrave. The 1685 edition runs to some 300 pages. When a 1678 edition of the book was discovered and put up for sale in 2007, the auctioneer Charles Hansen was reported as saying that no more than 200 copies were printed in the 17th century. He added that, May would have been very much the Gordon Ramsay of his day, something of a celebrity chef. Asserted that, only 400 copies were printed. Approach May's recipes included customs from the Middle Ages, alongside European dishes such as French bisque and Italian brodo, broth, with about 20% of the book devoted to soups. May provides a large number of recipes for venison, as for sturgeon, but balances his more elaborate and costly recipes with some for simple dishes. The recipes are presented entirely as instructions, without lists of ingredients. The instructions are not necessarily in order, he can write. Then have a rost capon minced. Requiring the cook to have already taken, prepared and roasted the capon, a process that takes some hours, in the middle of a recipe for oleo padrita. Quantities, if given, are mentioned in passing. Thus he may mention, put them a boiling in a pipkin of a gallon, or the juice of two or three oranges, or he may simply say, and put into beaten butter, leaving the cook to judge the quantity required. Contents The book is organized into 24 broad sections, but within these there is sometimes little sign of structure. Thus in section I, after the elaborate Spanish oleo padrita there follow four recipes for bone, marrow pies to accompany the oleo, then three ways to make a bisque, seven ways to boil a chine of veal or mutton, three ways to make barley broth, again involving meat for its gravy, and so on. If this seems at least to be all about boiling meat, the same section contains to make several sorts of puddings. Ranging from blood pudding and haggis to sweet rice pudding flavored with nutmeg, cloves, mace, currants, and dates. The book also contains a memoir of the author. Illustrations The first edition contained a frontispiece of the author. The fifth edition of 1685 contained an addition. 200 figures of several forms for all manner of back meats, either flesh, or fish, as peas tarts, custards, cheesecakes, and florentines, placed in tables, and directed to the pages they appertain to. Recipes The following is a recipe in which May used salt cod in a pie. Being boiled, take it the salt cod from its skin and bones, and mince it with some pippins, apples, season it with nutmeg, cinnamon, ginger, pepper, caraway seed, currants, minced raisins, rose water, minced lemon peel, sugar, slichet, sliced dates, white wine, verjuice, sour fruit juice, in this case probably from apples, and butter, fill your peas, bake them, and ice them. The following is May's recipe for lumber pie. Take some grated bread, and beef suet cut into bits like great dice, and some cloves and mace, then some veal or capon minced small with beef suet, sweet herbs, fair sugar, the yolks of six eggs boiled hard and cut in quarters, put them to the other ingredients, with some barberries, some yolks of raw eggs, and a little cream, work up all together and put it in the call of veal like little sausages, then bake them in a dish, and being half-baked have a pie made and dried in the oven, put these puddings into it with some butter, bryce sugar, some dates on them, large mace, 
grapes, or barberries, and marrow, being baked, serve it with a cut cover on it, and scrape sugar on it. Reception the celebrity cook and author Clarissa Dixon Wright covers the accomplished cook in detail. She notes that few other cookery books were published during the Commonwealth of Oliver Cromwell, and that the book is free of the plagiarism usual at the time. She considers the book therefore to have a freshness, and to be revealing of well-to-do life in 17th century England, with its many recipes for venison and for fish such as sturgeon and salmon. She is struck that the recipes for birds such as heron include instructions for fattening them after capture, while godwits, knots, gray plovers and curlews were force-fed in the way that the French force-feed geese today for pâté de foie gras. She notes that May offers sophisticated and ambitious recipes alongside simple dishes like porridge and sausages, while the presence of haggis reveals a definite Scottish influence. She notes, too, his openness to foreign recipes, with an incredibly complicated stew. From Spain, an oleo padrita containing a rack of mutton, a knuckle of veal, a capon, minced, twelve young pigeons, eight young chickens, ten sweetbreads, ten pallets, and lemons, pomegranates, grapes, saffron and almonds which presumably give the dish its Spanish aspect. The historian of food Polly Russell, writing in the Financial Times, is struck by the quantity of food May recommends for Christmas, including 21st courses and 19 second courses. Even the grand salad salad contained a whole capon and a breast of lamb or veal. Russell sees the lavishness of the book as a reaction to the former dominance of the Puritans over English life. Vera Rule, writing in The Guardian, argues that May's writing resembled that of his contemporary, the physician William Harvey, communicating exciting facts through urgent active verbs and imperative terms, leech that brawn, allay that pheasant, unbrace that mallard. She notes that both menus and customs were in transition from medieval to early modern. Novelties included tricks like wrapping puddings in a cloth before boiling, whereas May tells readers to place a ring of bits of toast around a stew, so that diners could eat by dipping, rather than make use of newfangled forks. She comments that his cooking was far from new, though he takes for granted two recent arrivals from the Americas, the potato and the turkey. On the other hand, Rule observes, May was still completely medieval in liking live birds bursting from a fake pie, complete with mock battle held on the table. Old Byzantine or Middle Eastern cuisine, brought to Europe by Islamic conquerors, similarly features with saffron, almonds, East Indies spices. She concludes that his ubiquitous luxury garnish was molten butter frothed with sharp orange juice. Kate Calhoun notes that the book was the first to group recipes logically into sections, and that May was the first cook in Britain to illustrate his book with woodcuts of spectacular pastry work that would set the standard for the next hundred years. Calling the accomplished cook one of the most clearly written collections of the century. She points out that a tenth of the book was about bisques, broths with a little meat or fish. She describes the book as in some ways an old-fashioned collection with savory dishes laden with sugar and dried fruits. Yet embracing the new French style, with plenty of butter, recipes that called for snails, and sauces that contained cream. Editions 1660 printed by R. W. Fernath. Brook at the Sign of the Angel in Cornhill, 1st edition. 1665 Improved 2nd Edition 1678 3rd Edition 1685 Obadiah Blagrave at St. Paul's 5th Edition Based on 1665 text References <references>